Welcome to this node breakdown for Mardini 2024 with Grayscale Gorilla. This is day 31, and today's node is the Labs Edge Smooth node. So this is a sub-level geometry node. We can go ahead and use a Labs Edge Smooth, and you'll notice that it just takes a single input. If we go ahead and feed it something like a grid, we won't really notice anything unless we go over to this edge smooth and just say include unshared edges. When you do this, you'll notice that the outside edges of this grid are smoothed out. On here, we have various settings for controlling the smoothing. For example, over here, we have the strength. So this just controls how much smoothing it should do. We also have the filter quality. The higher the filter quality, the more it's going to try to maintain detail in the geometry. So as we push this up, you'll see that it tries to keep our grid more or less the way that it came in. Over here at the bottom, we have neighbor smoothing. This is just the range from the edge to search for smoothing. So you won't notice it very much over here, but if we push it up, you'll see that it smooths further towards the center. We also have steps for that secondary neighbor smoothing, and this is just going to be the amount of smoothing to do. Now, this isn't the most useful way to use this node. Many of the useful ways you will find in the documentation, which can be found either on GitHub within the side effects documentation or on the side effects labs art station page. So many of the examples I'm showing you today are taken from the examples on the art station page. Over here, I'm going to just increase the rows and columns, something like that. And then we can use a labs random selection. We can increase the ratio. This is going to increase the number of points that are being randomly selected. We can also switch this to primitives so that it's randomly selecting primitives. And then we can also change the way that it's selecting. I find that periodic random intervals is a decent way of getting some sort of noise pattern. And then once you use the delete option, then use the edge smooth, you'll see that you end up with something fairly interesting. So it takes these very sharp, jagged edges and converts it into a much smoother, more organic shape. There are other use cases for this. Another interesting one is when you want to facet a geometry. So turn it into something that looks kind of low poly. Over here, I'm just gonna grab a rubber toy. I'm going to use a remesh on this. Change this to a target size of 0.02, something like that. Then use a cluster. If we show our node information, click on cluster, it'll show us our clusters. But we don't want our clustering based on P, we want it based on the normal direction. This will just cluster areas which are more or less facing the same directions. This is useful because we can use these shapes that are being generated to create flatter surfaces and sharp edges, which give this a faceted look. So to do that, we're firstly going to promote this cluster attribute using an attribute promote. We're going to go from point to primitive, just like that. And we don't want to do average. We either want minimum or maximum, so we can choose either one. Now we're going to use a point split and the attribute to split by is going to be that cluster attribute. And all that's going to do is actually split this up into those clusters. If we use an exploded view, you'll be able to see what it's done, right? So each one of our clusters are now a separate piece of geometry. With this, we can now use a group node. So we just go and use a group node, switch it to edges, give it a name. We won't use a base group. We'll use include by edges down here. We'll use unshared edges. Now all we have to do is grab our original remesh and use a group transfer, transfer our group edge group over there. And now we can use the labs edge smooth. We're just going to tell it to use that group. So edge group. And now let's increase our neighbor range to something like 10 and our steps to something like 150. And now if we use a normal node, you'll see the type of shape that we're getting. You can also use something like a poly reduce and we end up with a result like that. The last thing that I'm going to show you from the examples is just this over here. So we can just use a grid, give it a lot more rows and columns, then use a group node. We're going to select a base group and then switch to the brush select mode. On here, we can now draw something. So once you have that, you can either blast away the group or everything except for the group, and then use an edge smooth. Enable include unshared edges, and that will smooth it out. And so just like that, we can go ahead and end up with these fairly organic hand-drawn type looks. And that's just one of the many ways to use this node. So that's all for this video, and that's also the end of Mardini. Thank you so much for watching all of these videos. The response has been great. Also, a huge thank you to everyone over at SideFX who made this all possible, especially Robert McGee, who's been closely involved with making sure that Mardini runs smoothly. He was a huge help in bringing these videos to fruition. So again, just a massive thank you to him. That's going to bring us to the end of this series, but I'll be seeing you soon. So thank you for watching.